the Collingwood supporters out there, I just want you just to take a moment and just sit back, relax, and just listen to the words because I want to spend some time together. So, all right, Pies fans, let's gather around the misery fire. Let's talk about the elephant in the MCG. I mean, the less than ideal start to the season. Three games, three losses. It's enough to make Eddie McGuire, Eddie McGuire cry into his meat pie. And look, we get it. You're Collingwood. You wouldn't be Collingwood if you didn't spend half the season forgetting how to kick a footy. At the moment, Darcy Moore is now Darcy much less. Jeremy Howe is Jeremy, I have no idea. And big Mason Cox is pretty much Mason Flaccid. But here's the thing, Pies supporters. you got to remember that little flag that you got hold of at the end of last year. That wasn't a dream. You are premiers and you can turn it around. That sound of calling wood haunting the opposition supporters is now the sound of footsteps as you leave in droves midway through the final quarter. Now, you've got to remember your winning ways. Here's the one thing that you really do well. You don't forget how to play nice when you're on top. You remember last year? You were the kings of the close game and the masters of the run and gun that everybody is copying the gameplay of. Well, basically everyone except West Coast who have adopted it in 2024. So, Pies fans, I want you to suck it up. You've been here before. It's called Collingwood Way, a roller coaster ride of emotions that would make your nana dizzy. But here's the good news you have a culture, a team, a coaching staff that's second to none. Even Craig McRae couldn't mess this up badly. Or could he? All right, all right. In all seriousness, it will get better. You just got to weather the storm, nudge, nudge, wink, win. Chin up, Pies fans. The premiership defence is still on. What do you reckon, big dog? That was very lovely of you, Peps. A bit of, bit of a whack, but then, you know, encouraging at the end. It's got to be a bit encouraging, but I just want to get into this a little bit more because there are reasons for their demise so far in season 2024 because – you look at what they did last year and how they played consistently throughout the season, and they have a look at what they've been doing so far in 2024. And what I wanted to do is I wanted to compare that to a team that's playing really awesome football so far this year, which is the Sydney Swans. Now, I've done some research. and I've taken basically the averages of season 2023 and the averages of season 2024 and done a comparison in determining if if they're higher or lower, and how much of a percentage they are up on those statistics. So this was actually quite fascinating. When you read out the statistics of where they've gone positive, it makes a little bit of sense, but the ones that they've gone negative of, you will just absolutely blow your mind. So let me go through some things for you. All right. So from a disposal perspective, they're averaging just over 4% less a game. Now, this is the one that killed me. Inside 50s, they are 22% less so far this year than that they rolled out in 2023. They're not even getting the ball inside 50 whatsoever. They're averaging two goals less a game. So they're not getting it in and they're not scoring. They're also, their tackle count is down 14%. Their hit outs though are up 15. So they're getting their hands on the ball first. Cox and Cameron are getting their hands on the ball, but everybody around is not getting their hands on it themselves. They're getting beaten to it by the opposition. Uh, their contested marks are down 10% per game. Their one percenters, one percenters, smothers, shepherds, uh, hit on, tap ons are down 14% from last year. Their bounces are down 55% per game so far. So they're not even getting the ball. They're not even attacking with it. They don't even have the space to run and gun as they did last year. Interestingly enough, though, their center clearances are up 27%. So as soon as the ball gets out of the middle, they're just not working hard whatsoever. Their meters gained is down 5%, and their uh, intercepts are up 4%, which is understandable when you have a look at the opposition is getting the, more, the ball 
more than them. It's coming in a lot more. They're going to intercept it as well too. All right. So I want to compare that to Sydney Swans. So the Swans from a disposals perspective, exactly the same as last year. All right. But their inside 50s are up 9%. Now we spoke about football teams being very dour. Sydney Swans have been a very uh, defensive oriented team. Now they're attacking, attacking a lot more, and they're bringing the ball, like I said, 9% more inside 50s this year compared to last. They're kicking 25% more goals, so around about three goals per game more than they did in the previous season. Their tackle count is down 5%, which makes a bit of sense because if you've got the ball, you're not going to be tackling yourself. Their hitouts are up 12%, and that would have to do with, with Grundy joining. So they've got uh, someone in the ruck that's being able to get their hands on the ball first and feeding that out to their to the run ballers. Disposal efficiency has not changed. Their contested marks are down a little bit more. They're down by 30%. So that tends to make me feel, feel that they're not kick, connect, uh, kicking to contests. One-on-one, two-on-one, they're opening up the ground a little bit more, switching it, getting some easier ball. Their uh, one percenters are up fifteen percent, so they're doing the little things more often than they did last year. Same bounces, same center clearances. They're up two percent in meters gamed, which is around about a hundred meters. So it's only twenty-five meters a quarter, give or take. And their intercepts are up as well too by one. So it's not a big change, but it just goes to show that the biggest difference between those two teams came down to inside fifties. One went up quite considerably. One's gone down quite considerably. The tackle count has gone, one gone up considerably, one's gone down. But the interesting one is those one percenters. Like I said, the things that you really don't get a stat for are the biggest difference between what Sydney has made, got better at this year, and the opposite of what uh, Collingwood have done. So to me, it sounds like Collingwood, they're not working for each other. They're not doing the little things that they were doing last year. The taps, the knock-ons, the shepherds, the smothers, those little things that garnered those extra couple of extra inside 50s, which garnered those extra goals, which allowed them to win by those small margins. When you have a look at Sydney, they're doing the complete opposite as well too. So it, there is a science behind it that it just comes down to work rate. They are not having the same work rate as they did last year. Pendlebury. Uh, I didn't think I'd say this, but from one season to the next, he looks slow. Side bottom's not having the same effect. Howe's not having the same effect. Mason Cox, well, don't worry about him. Um, Jamie Elliott's getting a little bit older as well. He's not having the same effect. They've got a lot of stars over that 30 range. They've got like eight players or nine players in that 30 range in their team at the moment. And Geelong have been able to hide it relatively well, but they did miss finals um, in the previous season. Okay. Go, I was going to ask you, do you think that this whole Collingwood drop-off or Sydney improve, do you think it's effort or care? But Well, they, they're both the same. I think if you care, you will put more effort in. If you oh, don't sorry, But no, no, when no, you're saying no, tap ones for your... No, you just don't. No, you don't. You, you're not caring about your output. You're not caring about the team's output and you're not doing those little things that you would do for your teammates. Yeah. Yeah. Because and, and you know, you, you've played you've played sport, you've played lots of hockey over the years. I've played lots of footy over the years. And you know the teams that are tight, they would they would do anything for each other. And then you've got the other people who just, you know what, I'm not going to really worry about anyone else. All I'm going to worry about is myself. Now the interesting thing was is that Nick Dacos was supposed to go to the Grand Prix on the weekend and the club banned him. Mm. So what's that saying? The number one marquee player who apparently had the best 50 games to ever start a career was not allowed by his club to go to the Grand Prix, which he is a monster uh, a monster athlete, if that makes sense. Okay. Ambassador. So, yeah, ma ambassador. So, yep. Um, okay, I don't know we see this. We've seen this with other coaches, most other teams where – they're stacked with talent, so yep. they put in effort on an individual basis, but they're not prepared to do the effort or have the care for the team game. Well, there's that classic saying, J-Dog, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Yeah. And Good one. that's what they're not doing. They've got plenty of talent. The interesting thing is as well, too, 
Uh, had a 50th on the weekend, uh, and the same group of people went camping with Heathy Buxton, who's on the um, who's on the chat with us, an absolute superstar. Came to the conclusion that Collingwood were the worst grand final premiers in recent history. How do you mean? Because they weren't dominant. They weren't a dominant team. Really, they didn't dominate through the finals. I think they won all finals by a combined 15 points. Yeah, it's like it's like it's like what Dom Toretto says in Fast and the Furious. It's about family. Doesn't it? <laughs> Don't even mean right. Inch or a mile, Peps. Yep. Winning is winning. Hey, look, win definitely winning is winning. But they they didn't dominate like other teams throughout the years. Richmond dominated their year. Melbourne dominated, obviously, the final side of things, but they had a really good record working in. Uh, Geelong dominated virtually the entire season. Uh, you could say Collingwood in their older ones. So they didn't really dominate last year. They they did win a lot of games by the smell of an oily rag. And the games that they were winning last year through that extra effort, through those one percenters, et cetera, they're not bringing the milkshakes to the yard this year, okay? Now, I yeah. love this comment uh, that's just been brought up. The best clubs push players to be better when they're uncomfortable instead of trying to be comfortable. Bo Hawkins, I love what you are bringing. That is absolutely, um, yep, yeah. yep, yeah, love it. Absolutely love it. So really, really appreciate that as well too. Um, so your thoughts, what do you reckon? No, I want to the listeners as well too. I, I, I think there's the, the – as a – as Hightower said in Police Academy, Police Academy 2, the meter don't lie. The meter don't lie. And that meter of those stats, it don't lie. And it's showing yeah. the results so far. I'm interested in what the, I think I think people are people on the chat and, and people you talked about footy, they're they're saying the same sorts of things. It just looks like a different, it looks like a different Collingwood. It feels like a different Collingwood. They don't, this year I don't so think far. anyone's scared of Collingwood this year. Last year you were like, Ooh, who's gonna beat Collingwood? Now it's like, I'm not scared of Collingwood. Yeah, St. Kilda, I didn't pick St. Kilda to win last week. I feel like an idiot. They, they ran them off their feet. They were gorgeous last week. They were good. Yep, they were absolutely good. Just look at the Hawks when they won their three, Pete. No one was scared of, of oh, sorry, everyone was scared of Hawthorne. No one really was scared of Collingwood. Now I'm going to get some blowback from the Collingwood supporters when I post this on YouTube later on. And that's fine. But the facts are facts. And I'd say that about any team who hasn't performed. Yeah. So what's going? So so for for viewers and listeners, do you agree with Peps? Is it is it effort? Is it is it all those stats that that basically are telling the truth behind Collingwood and a Sydney picking up where Collingwood left off last year? 